Joe Budden calls out Charlemagne for sabotaging his Spotify negotiations. Nah, he shouldn't get paid. That's why I'm mad at Charlemagne. Me and you did too much for you to go on The Breakfast Club and say, Joe's bugging. Because that comes off as hate. Because even if I am bugging, why wouldn't you want that to happen? That's right. On the episode of Bag Fuel, baby, Joe Budden called out Charlemagne for the way that he sabotaged his negotiation with Spotify. If you don't remember, a few years ago, Joe Budden was negotiating a new deal with Spotify, one that would be a landmark deal for anyone in urban podcasting. However, Charlemagne would go on his platform, The Breakfast Club, and throw some shade on Joe Budden when he would highlight how Joe Budden is out of his mind and he doesn't know how to do business or properly negotiate. Well, on Backfield, Joe Budden said that, you know, him and Charlemagne have done too much business together for him to speak that way. He's largely talking about all those pull-ups. I think Joe Budden used to pay Charlemagne out of pocket when he did the pull-ups. He did a couple pull-ups. Joe was paying him. So I think what Joe Budden is insinuating here is, hey, Charlemagne, how can you say I do bad business when... You did business with me, I looked out for you, I paid you out of my pocket, and this is how you talk about me. Now, on the other hand, Charlemagne himself might be speaking about how Joe Budden was negotiating publicly. Charlemagne doesn't really negotiate publicly to the level that Joe Budden does. It could be because he's a radio personality and not a creative. Remember, Joe Budden is a creative, he's a lot more expressive, and Charlemagne comes from the radio ecosystem. Nonetheless, this is probably the 1500th chapter that needs to be added to the battle between Joe Budden and Charlemagne. I think that what Charlemagne said might be somewhat accurate, not all the way accurate as, hey, if Joe Budden wants to negotiate for a billion dollars, he can, but if he does, he can be ridiculed. Uh, another interesting thing that Joe Budden says is, uh, you know, Spotify never negotiated with them. Our negotiation, we never even had a negotiation. It never got, it, it, we had a phone call. We had one phone call. There was never an offer made. Well, if you look at Gimlet's startup season, when they talk about how they negotiated with Spotify, they said that Spotify was very intense in the way it negotiated. Like they were looking through through Gimlet's files, they were asking them how much they were listened to in Ohio. Hey man, what what was you making on the February 15th after Valentine's Day? How many listeners did you have? What was the retention? And that's how they were negotiating with Gimlet. So I think Spotify never took it to that level with Joe Budden because they saw him as nothing more than a guy with a podcast. A podcast that had the listeners that were pretty high, but not enough to generate a bunch of value for the company. Now we have to look at what Joe Budden's claims were. He said that, you know, the only people who get these big deals are white. That's true. You know, you're talking about people like Rogan. You're talking people like Call Her Daddy. I mean, I guess there's an audience that exists for that because of the demographics of America so yes he's right in that regard but if joe would have laid the groundwork of a truly big network i think he would have got something akin to maybe 80 million or 60 million if he would have played his cards a little bit differently i think the way he handled the rory and mall situation led to the collapse of him being taken serious by spotify imagine if he had the rory and mall podcast and then he had the Joe Budden-ish and Ice podcast. And then he had his own Joe Budden show and all of this stuff later. And then he had another, I'll name this podcast later. If he had another IP where he breaks down rap albums or something like that. That might have been valuable in the millions to Spotify. And like it or not, I think Joe is a little bit stubborn in what he envisions media entertainment to be. Spotify is going to put ads all over your stuff. They're going to do ad insertions when you're talking randomly. Boom, Squarespace, buy Squarespace. And I don't know if Joe Budden was willing to acquiesce. I truly think as time matriculates forward, Spotify and Joe Budden just weren't going to be on the same page. 
right? Because if you look at the deal Spotify did with Joe Budden, the case could be made that Joe Budden finessed them. They couldn't put ads on his podcast. They couldn't put ads on his old podcast. Like all of the Spotify exclusive episodes of the Joe Budden podcast, you don't you don't see ads. Because that's the stipulation that Joe had with them. So I think they might have seen the way Joe was doing business and was like, Ah, oh, buddy, no, we need to be able to do what we want if you're going to want that level of money. And Joe also didn't have the amount of IPs that would make him garner that level of pay. Now, as for Charlemagne versus Joe Budden, I think these two guys, it's weird the dynamic they have. Like, you just got to remember, like, these guys, they like each other, I think. They they admire what the other, other person does. They see their faults in each other. I think there's a certain part of Joe Budden that wants to be more like Charlemagne, and there's another part of Charlemagne that wants to be like Joe Budden. I think Charlemagne loves the fact that Joe can be independent and truly tell people, hey, F you. I don't need to do nothing. I can do what I want. I could quit. I could fire people and I could look absolutely crazy. I'm still going to get a deal. And then Joe Budden looks at Charlemagne and is like, damn, this dude really has people publicly vouching for him. Like he has people who will ride or die for him. This guy has the Charla Mafia. Right? There's people in high places that will vouch for that man. They will take shots for that man. And Joe just doesn't have that. Right? Joe has the people that will hold him down around him at the given moment. You know, like Ish, Icy, Manny, all of them will hold him down. But the people that have worked with Joe, they don't necessarily do that. Look at academics. Right? Academics. And Charlemagne have engaged in war, like subtle warfare. But academics loves that man. He defends him even though Charlemagne be taking his little shots. And I think that's largely because Charlemagne gave him his first big industry interview. So something about the way Charlemagne counsels people, the way Charlemagne plays a role in their lives, leaves a lasting impact on them. In ways that Joe Budden just doesn't do. It's kind of crazy. Because you could. Like Joe Budden is the same type of. Like. I don't. I wouldn't say he's the same type of mentor. He mentors people too. But for some reason. It don't stick like that. Like in a perfect world. Rory and Maul. If they never fall out with Joe Budden. They should be Joe's biggest supporters. If somebody says something about Joe. If their relationship is the same, you would see Rory and Maul holding him down. Nah, Joe's special. He's amazing. He did right by me. He's the reason that I'm in the industry. But since they fell out, that doesn't happen. There's no Joe Mafia. And the only people that stand up for Joe are those that be around him while he's paying them. That says a lot. And I think... The two men see themselves and their shortcomings in each other. All right, y'all. Follow me on Instagram, The Stop TV. Follow me on Twitter, The Stop TV. We doing the science. It's fun. It's great. Listen to the Bag Fuel interview. I actually think Bag Fuel's on a run, man. Bag Fuel is on a run. I wonder if there's any science to be done in Joe Budden doing a Bag Fuel interview. We all know Bag Fuel is the former partner of Mav Hoffa. And I think there could be something. Uh, there might not be nothing, but Mav Hoffa and Joe might not be on the same page. I'll see. I'll see. I'm going to be monitoring that situation. Uh, right now, it's just reckless speculation. All right, y'all. Tap in with me. This is Danny from The Stop. Peace. <laughs>